guess what these are going to be used for in today's video? <laughs> That's right. They're going to sit right here as an interesting background item related to today's topic while I do not touch them at all. Hey, everybody. Teching's back. Um... Power's been out here in my humble little country village for the last few days. Uh, Sunday night, it went off for about 11 hours, came back on for a little while Monday morning, and then went off again for another 14 hours. It just came back on like at 3 o'clock this morning, and uh, I, I cannot think of a worse punishment for people. Being forced to live in complete darkness as literally the entire planet did for most of human history. C can you imagine such a suffering? Natural light hitting my flesh! Ah! Hits me like... Lamp. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's nice artificial light. It gives me power. All right. Well, after suffering through the dark ages, quite literally, I can only think of one video topic to discuss after all of that. <laughs> But of course, I'm saving that particular video for my 10-year YouTube anniversary extravaganza coming up at the end of this month, so sit tight for that. But for right now, I don't know, let's just talk about Eneru's Goro Goro no Mi, I guess. I want to see something cool. I have to channel my key for this. Hold on. Ooh, I wield the powers cosmic at my fingertips! Okay, let's get to it. All right, so Eneru, or Enel, if you swing that way. Personally, I like Eneru because, I don't know, it's just something about that added syllable at the end that really just adds a flair of mystery and sexiness to the character. You know what I mean? I mean, come on, you gotta look at Eneru and say, all right, he's got the washboard abs, he has it going on. But, uh, yes, he wields the power of the mighty Goro Goro no Mi. And let's just stop it right there and let me just bring it out and say... This is one of the strongest fruits in the entire series. Like, I, I don't really think that argument could be, like, you know, pulled another way. Like, it's not that strong. Like, no, it's it's pretty strong in terms of just power, energy. Like, he, he is energy. Um, I mean, we all are, but he especially. Um, you know, it, it causes mass widespread damage, and it's, like, really rivaling, like, Whitebeards in terms of, like, that sheer power aspect. You know, in fact, they even sound alike. You know, you got Whitebeard's Gura Gura no Mi, which has been stated to be the strongest paramecia he can cause mass earthquakes and tsunamis that can just wipe islands off the face of the map and then you have eneru's goro goro no mi which is this like lightning fruit that can summon ju divine judgment and also wipe out islands now oda did come out and say because somebody asked him you know how strong would eneru be on the blue sea like if he was like a legit pirate like you know, luffy and everybody and you know oda came out and said that oh he would have about a 500 million berry bounty keep in mind though this was back before like anybody had a bounty that high like, that was a ridiculously high number back then. But Oda did come out and also clarify that he wouldn't be, like, the strongest. He wouldn't rule it, because there's a lot of other really strong customers there, probably also alluding to people like Whitebeard and Big Mom and Kaido and everybody. But still, he would be a contender. He would certainly be a contender. And I guess, yeah, I guess Lao G was accurate when he said that the J is where all the power lies, because we got the Guru Guru and the Goro Goro. Hell, throw in Buffalo's Guru Guru, and then there you go. The trio of the top three strongest devil fruits in all of One Piece. Confirmed right there. Buffalo, Eneru, and Whitebeard. Okay. Now, uh, before we get into this, though, I wanted to introduce you to my friend, uh, this... This little guy right here. This is the kanji for electricity, and he is actually one of my favorite kanji. I just think it also looks pretty cool. And get familiar with this kanji, because it appears a lot in uh, Eneru's repertoire of techniques, of which he has several. In fact, he might have the most, like, named attacks out of all of the Logias um, in, in we've been, you know, revealed so far. Um, and you know what? It's like, whenever you command an element at your disposal, like fire or water or wind or electricity, there's a few ways you could take that. You can either take it like, listen, I command a freaking element of nature. I can bend it to my will. I don't need to come up with a bunch of flashy attack names for that. I could just walk into town, snap my fingers, send a lightning bolt down or two, and I think the townsfolk get the gist about what I'm about. You know, but not Eneru. I mean, the dude has a pretty big god complex, and think about what Eneru does all day. Seriously, he just sits around in his throne room, he has his slaves building the maxim for him, so he doesn't really get involved in that. Um, you know, he has his priests going out and enforcing the law 
laws of upper yard. I mean, yeah, he can use his mantra in conjunction with his Goro Goro no Mi to basically amp it up to a huge, ridiculously wide range, and so he can hear what everybody's saying all around Skypea. So what does he do? Whenever someone shit talks him, you know, oh, he sends a lightning bolt and nukes them from orbit, you know, but that can't take up most of his day. So I imagine whenever Eneru's chilling out, just munching on apples, what he's actually doing is taking out his big book of mythology, and he's looking up all the famous thunder and lightning deities that have ever existed for names for, for his Goro Goro no Mi techniques, because most of them are named after thunder and electricity deities, okay? So we got Sango, who is the West African lightning deity. We got El Thor, which is pretty obviously the Norse god of thunder. I should have brought my, uh, my hammer up here, but I did not. Uh, El, by the way, just E-L, can actually translate into god in Hebrew. So there's another reference. There's a lot of god and deity references here, as I think you can probably imagine. We got Kari, which is a Malayan god of lightning. Hino, which is the Iroquois, uh, that's a name for the Thunderbird. So there you go. Yeah, that's one of the more obvious ones. The Thunderbird, that's where that one is. We got Kiten, which is an Asian lightning deity, but also Kiten can be read as uh, Raiju. Now, many of you might be familiar with Raijin. Raijin is the ancient Japanese or the Shinto god of lightning. That's what Eneru's design is based on. That's the reason he has those drums behind him with that Tomoe pattern. Yeah, that's that's where that comes from, right? So he has another attack named after Rai Jin, but Rai Ju is sort of like Rai Jin's like, like animal companion, um, and it takes the form of like a fox or a dog or a wolf. That's whenever that technique when uh, Eneru struck one of his drums and like a wolf came out, like electricity wolf, and attacked Luffy. That's what that is. Um, and it's, it's been said, like, Raijin, you know, he would send a great thunderbolt down to Earth, and then Raiju would come out of said lightning bolt. So there's the reference there. We got Mama Ragan, which is a Central Australian Aborigine kind of deal. We got Rai Go, which is not really a deity so much as it's uh, basically the Buddha welcoming the departed souls to the afterlife. However, in this sense, it's uh, an attack that uh, is, like, his strongest. That's when he makes that, you know, giant Genki Dama of electricity and with the Maxim, because the Maxim kind of augments his abilities with all the gold being a really good conductor for electricity. So with his powers augmented with his uh, Maxim plus his mantra, he can make this giant electrical death spirit bomb and just whoosh and then just obliterate whatever island he happens to be sailing over, you know? Um, and so that that's obviously named after that, like the welcoming. So kingdom come, like welcoming you into death. Um, and then finally, his ultimate attack, the one where he transforms his physical body, he like basically, it's, it's not really he's like trans transforming it's basically just like he's generating such an ungodly amount of electricity or i guess in this case he's generating a godly amount of electricity that he takes this form and this is his 200 million max volt amaru and that can well that's an incan god but it can also the kanji being used for it is kanji for raijin and so obviously this is a japanese reference oda's japanese so you figure where is the raijin reference going to be overt here you go right here okay so yeah that, that's what all of his techniques are named out of and they all do different things but they all come down to electrocuting people there's some other ones he has like his vari techniques the vari are his like most basic ones vari is just the japanese onomatopoeia for like the sound electricity makes so you know like with dogs in english the sound the onomatopoeia for what a dog makes is bark bark um in japan it's wan wan which is that's the origin of wanda's name in case you were curious but uh no with this it's like for electricity in english it'd be like bzz you know like sparks electricity um in japanese it's it's more vari so there you go that's that's where the origin of that is and that technique is basically just him like that's what he uses to like silence dissenters not really a lot of electricity pumping through to kill you i mean he can amp it up to like you know 5 10 million 20 million 50 million you know it depends on how much of a pissed off you know moody's in at the moment but yeah he could just like grab you and just like 5 million vari and then just knocks you down and you get all charred and you're like, oh, but you could stand back up. Let's be honest here, like, if this was in any realistic setting, I think most people that get electrocuted by Eneru should have just died right there. But here's the interesting thing. The Vari techniques and a lot of his techniques only pay mind to the voltage of electricity. Now listen, I'm not an electrician. Electrician? Electrician. I'm not a guy that works with electricity, okay? I'm not. But I was understanding that, like, voltage and the current 
those are like just two separate parts of what you get when you get like the wattage you take voltage times the amps or the current right and then you get watts or the power of the current so that's really what this comes down to right um but no in the case with eneru he's only mentioning the voltage which is just one aspect of electricity i'm not gonna go way into that because it's not really my field of expertise i literally just did some research on this again i literally just pulled up a website that was like explaining electricity and the concept of like how that works to children like in elementary school like a bill nye kind of thing and i'm just like you know what okay let's just read that it makes sense to me okay i also learned how to make an electrical magnet with a battery and a nail so we'll we'll do that later i guess um you know third grade science experiments with teching i'll also show you how to make a volcano i actually can do that that was one of my projects when i was in elementary school i did make a, a volcano right but um yeah it's just like the voltage is part of it, but, you know, in order to understand the true power, the wattage of how much he's outputting, I think we also need to know the, the amps as well, the current that's, that's going through. But, okay, it's a shit ton of electricity. That's what matters, okay? That's what really matters. And here's the kind of... That this is, like I said, a ridiculously powerful fruit. Like, if Luffy had not been made of rubber, if Luffy was not the literal opposite of everything, and, and according to Eneru, and if also he didn't have the Will of D, because it's like, you get it, he's the Will of D, and the Will of D are the biggest threat to gods, you know, referring to the Celestial Dragons normally, but in this, say, in this case, it takes on a little bit more literal when Eneru was claiming himself to be a god, names all of his techniques after gods, and I mean, like... If we're being real here, like, if you're just chilling out in your house, and then all of a sudden the sky goes dark, and electricity just starts going crazy, like, you start seeing, like, electrical dragons flying through the sky and shit, and then Eneru just descends, because he can fly, he can just turn into electricity and just zip around at, like, 3,000 miles per second, or whatever fast electricity can go. I think lightning strikes at, like, 3,000 miles per second. I think that's in general, but I might be misremembering that but you know he just descends from on high and just declares himself your god i mean like he's got the skills to pay the bills guys that's what i'm saying i think there'd be a lot of people just bowing to eneru at that point like well shit it's like that line in uh in rick and morty with the giant that episode with the giant heads and uh you know principal vagina he comes out and he's just like well I'm, I'm gonna go outside and literally bow and pay respects and worship the thing that's literally controlling the fucking weather so it's like okay yeah i mean right um but yeah no seriously like if luffy didn't have the rubber fruit would he have really beaten Eneru? Would he? Would they have any chance? I don't think they would have. I think they would have all died. Because even like Zoro and Robin and Gonfall, Wiper, they all stood up to him. He's just like, up, 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 up. done. And like, it was easy for him. The, the one guy that gave him the most trouble was Wiper. But that was only because Wiper had those Sea Prism skates. And that's, Sea Prism Stone is not something very common in Skypiea. So that was like the last thing even Eneru was expecting for him to have. And then he pulled out the freaking, you know, reject dial gambit. And that was still kind of BS. Because I understand what he did. He used his powers like a defibrillator to start his heart. But how could he have used his powers as a defibrillator if he was unconscious and therefore could not control his powers? I call BS, Soda. I understand what you did. I know the reasoning behind it, but... It's kind of the same thing whenever Law used Gamma Knife to just radiation screw over all of Dofi's organs. It's like, it's like lungs and his heart just get shredded. And it's just like, it's okay because I can use my strings to patch him up. I'm like, okay, fine, I get it. It's cool. It's Mongo. What else can you do? But yeah, they would have been screwed. Luffy would not have been able to defeat Eneru. And actually, honestly, while we're even on the subject of that, did Luffy even really manage to beat Eneru? Or, like, foil his plans. I mean, yeah, he hit him really hard with a golden ball and knocked his ass out. But, honestly, he wasn't even unconscious for that long. He didn't die or anything. He just got knocked unconscious. The Maxim fell. He woke back up. He got in control of it. He... And then just continued on to the Fairy Varth, which is what he was gonna do anyway. Skypea is still electrically screwed over, you know, the, the Death Pia, the Raiga shit, that still happened. It's not like Luffy saved the island or anything. Um, Eneru's still alive, and he continued his dream. 
But, you know, Luffy managed to get the victory on him. And, of course, you had the whole symbolism with, you know, the, the bell and what that represented. And when Luffy went to go punch out Eneru, the golden ball that was attached to his arm also hit the bell. And, you know, Cricket and the Sariyama Alliance heard it. So it was important. I'm not saying that final attack, you know, meant nothing. It did. I'm just saying, like, in terms of, you know, foiling Eneru's master plan or, you know, killing him or anything or just, you know, knocking him out of the sky... It did none of that. He just got back up and then just continued on to the Fairy Verth, where he now controls an entire uh, robot army and an entire city, which he powered up using his abilities. So, let's talk about that now. Okay. How the hell does Eneru's power work, then? Because let me tell you something. Like, from what we've seen, he can just generate lightning strikes strong enough to just, boom, just blow the crap out of an entire town and... He doesn't seem like he's worse for the wear. It doesn't seem like his power really drains him or anything. Uh, you know, it'd be one thing if it's like, I can only use my power. I can only summon this many lightning bolts a day and then my, my stamina gets drained. But that doesn't seem to be the case. The dude is just lounging around and just like, Oh, I heard someone talking bad about me. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, sleep spell, lightning bolt. Sleep spell is, they're dead, they're dead, they're dead at that point. Lightning bolt, you know. Um, and he just does that, and he can just command this, like, electricity out of nowhere, and no, no problems for him. He can turn into electricity. Uh, he's an internal battery, essentially. He, he is the ultimate answer to the energy crisis in our world. He is unlimited free energy, essentially. So, and this is even shown, like, it, like, when he goes to the moon, there's an entire city under the moon, and it's a city. It's not like a house or two. It's a city that has an entire army of like thousands of these automata dudes. And the whole city is wired up with to run on electricity. I, I'm guessing the people on the moon found some sort of like natural resources, like some kind of like equivalent to fossil fuels and things on the moon. They used that to power their city, but then the moon ran dry of those resources, so they had to leave the moon and head to the earth, leaving their city just dead dead and powerless. I know what that's like. So Eneru just kind of walks in and just kind of like grabs one of the, um, you know, one of the conductors or whatever, the dynamo. I don't know. He just touches the damn thing and just and the whole city just powers up like that. So like he did it in the One Piece world. So like if all of Chicago or Los Angeles just loses power, could Eneru just walk into like the power station and just be like, Hold on a second, mortal. And then the whole city just powers up like that, and Eneru's just sitting there holding on to, like, the cable or whatever, just hooked up to the generator, and he's just like, Oh, yes, uh, I suppose... Like, he would never do that. He's not that kind of a kind enough guy, but it's just like... Uh, I suppose I will provide energy for you. Now, there is, like, a max output that he can do, um, because he said as much. His final attack against Luffy when he went into his Raijin form, his 200 million volts, it was stated that was his 200 million max volts, so he can't go higher than that. Still, 200 million volts, um, that's a... That's a pretty high number. I think you don't, you don't really need, you really need 300 million volts or 400 million. I think, I think 200 million volts, that'll probably get you to where you need to be. Once again, we don't really know about, you know, the total wattage that's being generated here, but it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot, okay? Um, you know, um, any interesting people out there that are electrical engineers or know stuff about physics, calculate how much electrical energy it would take to blow up an island, and that's what you get basically on hand on standby with Eneru. Um, so that's probably, though, that, that max, though, that's probably just the max he can output at any given time. And keep in mind, even when he went into that Raijin form... Um, I mean, he was beaten up a little bit from Luffy beforehand because Luffy's immune, so he can just punch Eneru and it can connect, and he was doing the stuff with the gold and everything, so Eneru was battle damaged at that point, but just the act of going into that form, that Raijin form, that huge thunder god, blue pot-bellied, you know, form did not really seem to drain him at all. It, it, it didn't seem like, I can only maintain this form for five seconds, it takes so much power. It, it really did seem like that was more of like his final trump card, that against literally any other opponents, 
that would have caused some serious damage. I mean, now, at the end of the day, if you know hockey, of course, but at the time, the Straw Hats, nobody else knew armament hockey. You know, uh, no, I think armament hockey didn't even really exist. It was observation hockey. It was being called mantra in Skypea. But, you know, even if you know armament hockey, though, that doesn't protect you from the Devil Fruit's attacks. All that does is allows you to physically touch and attack the Logia. So, you know, let's say, like, even if Enaru were to fight against, like, Zoro right now, um, that would still probably be a, a relatively hard fight, like a pretty hard fight for Zoro. It's not like Zoro could just slice him, um, because he's still got his mantra, he's still got his electricity. Yeah, Zoro can arm him and hockey up his swords, but if Enaru sends down three lightning bolts before he even has a chance to, like, move his sword and swing it, then Zoro's gonna go down. I don't really see any way that he can do that. I mean, yeah, if Zoro gets close enough to Enaru and just slices him, it'll connect, it'll cut him. Uh, but Enaru is wicked fast. He has the mantra, and he combines his mantra which, with his electricity. Basically, it's just like a like a radio signal or something. So he's just sending out waves, and he can just you know like like hear people across a wide array. You know, kind of like uh, kind of like um, sonar, I guess, is kind of what how he does it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just knowing armament hockey does not guarantee you immediate victory against Enaru, unless Enaru was, like, a complete moron with how he used his fruit. And we saw that in Skypea. I mean, he was an arrogant son of a bitch. Let's not, let's not say he was, and he did have huge amount of character flaws. Whenever you have a god complex the size that Enaru had, yeah, you're gonna have a, a lot of character flaws there, you know? He thought of himself, like, better than everybody just by default, but, you know, the way he used his devil fruit, it was I can't say it was stupid, you know, combining it with his mantra, using his different attacks, you know, legitimately, like, knowing that gold was one of the best conductors you can get for electricity, and then getting all the gold together to build the maxim to augment his own power, and then being able to build a flying machine with your devil fruit, I mean... That's knowledge of electricity. He understood how this worked. Um, and by the way, speaking of conductors really quick, because obviously, you know, rubber is the insulator for that. Um, yeah, so when it comes to uh, conductors of electricity, from what I've read, the best ones you can get are gold or silver. The only reason is that uh, you don't see them that often now. It's usually copper wiring. That's usually what we use uh, because it's cheaper. You know, using silver and gold for things like in just regular household use, rather expensive. You'll usually see gold and silver over in like circuit boards that are like in like in the way like a satellite is constructed and stuff like stuff that's really important but normally it's just copper and copper um can and aluminum as well they, they oxidize when you know hit the air for a period of time and then that can rust and that can lead to further problems um but when it comes to gold and silver really really good quality conductors it's just like you know they're expensive i wonder if you could get gold and silver like a uh, wiring you know gold plated silver there you go it's the best conductor ever um but yeah, that's the situation there. That's why he built the Maxim using his gold. Um, he also had a technique called, uh, uh, I think it was like gloam paddling. That's what it was. And it was taking his trident. He had a trident, you know, where he had a scepter made of gold. And using the electrical heat that was generated, he can actually mold it into whatever shape he wanted. So that raises like a bunch of questions. Not even like the fact that like, that's less about controlling electricity and electrical heat. And that's more about molding gold. Because you'd figure, like, it's basically kind of like uh, Guild to Zorro's uh, Gold Gold Fruit from, you know, film Gold movie. Because it's like, alright, I have the power to summon, to, to create electricity. I'm like, alright. Well, what goes hand in hand with that is I can, can generate heat as well. Something else he could just do. He can just generate seemingly a infinite amount of heat with his power. Um, so he takes his golden staff and he heats it up. And it, it's sort of like, it, it sort of like does like a bubbly sort of thing where it's like, bloop, 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 shing, and then just turns into a trident. I'm like, I don't think just being able to control electricity and the heat to melt the gold can shape it into whatever shape you want. I think you would still need like a cast mold for that, you know? But whatever, anime, right? He figured out this against Luffy, you know, because Luffy's punching him and all of his electrical attacks are doing nothing. And that was a massive... I just love that scene right here just because of like... It doesn't even like surprise Enaru so much as it just like fries his circuit board, to use a term. Like he he's never encountered anybody anybody that was immune to his powers like if anybody ever gave him lip all Enaru had to do was just and then you're down and just a smoldering heap on the ground sometimes he might let you live 
just to kind of like know what you did. Other times they'll just, you know, nuke you and your entire family. Um, but Luffy was the one person this did not, this didn't work. And he's just like, Enaru.exe uh, has stopped working. But then he calmed down a little bit and he figured out like, oh wait, no, he's immune to electricity, but not electrical heat. Ergo, I'll turn my staff into a trident, heat it up, you know, not to the point where it melts, but I'll heat it up to where it's really hot and then, you know, attack Luffy with it. And if I, you know, slice him with it, it's still going to burn. It's going to hurt him. So that's, that's how he figured out a way to fight Luffy. Luffy counters this by going into his uh, idiot mode, his gamu gamu no baka no. And then he just responds, you know, reflexively. But unfortunately, in that form, he couldn't uh, fight back. So, you know, the fight between them was rather interesting. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, Luffy kind of had the cheat code. You know, it's kind of like, you know, he's going up against, like, Luffy's, like, let's say Luffy's, like, level 30 at this point in the Skypea arc. Eneru's, like, level 90. Like, there's no way you're going to win. There's nothing you can do to win. Unless you have, like, oh, you have this special weapon that does bonus crit damage. I'm like, I'm playing Fire Emblem Awakening again right now. So it's like, oh, okay. It's like, it doesn't really matter. You have the special kind of, you know, trait to allow you to do damage to them. So there's that as well. But aside from the ones that I've already mentioned, let's just go through all of his electrical attacks. Like I said, a lot of these are not really, like, all that different or complicated. They usually just involve him sending out a blast of electricity. It's just, like, what shape is the blast of electricity? How far does it go? What, you know, what, you know, condescending smirk does Enaru have on his face when activating it? So we have his Vari, and it just amps up there. His Vari is just a standard electrical shock. He'll just appear in front of you with his death finger and just tsh, zapped. We also have Sango, which is more of like an indiscriminate kind of shock from like 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 uh, Denki Carminaris from like My Hero Academia, where he just takes his palm and just tsh, everybody around him. So if it's just like, oh, there's a lot of flies buzzing around me right now, Sango, tsh, and then they just all drop. El Thor is the attack he uses usually when delivering judgment over on Skypea. So remember, most people on Skypea they don't really know Eneru. They haven't like met him personally. Okay, they just know that there's a pissed off thunder deity that lives over there in Upper Yard. And if you say anything bad about him, like, hey, Eneru, bring it on. You don't have the balls, you know. And then he sends a giant electrical bolt, and that's El Thor, and just, you know, frying you and whoever happens to be around you at that time. Then we have Kari. Kari is one of the more interesting ones. It He uses his power to heat up the air around him, and then it just kind of explodes in a thunderclap. And he can use this to, you know, destroy, like if, like, Zoro was going to use his, like, you know, pound a hole technique to attack Eneru before the attack even hit him. He could just, like, you know, heat up the air and just cause it to explode and the attack would just fizzle out in the process causes a giant big boom and uh yeah the big boom i mean just in terms of intimidation once again like if you're going up against a group of like the uh, the shandorians that are these warriors and stuff if they're all like let us charge toward eneru's palace and you know they're charging and then this giant electric like like a uh, you know thunderbolt like the biggest like the loudest boom you've ever heard before just boom that's going to shock you. That's going to intimidate you a little bit. It's like, oh, oh no, we've, we've, we've pissed off the god of, and then it just electricity comes down. Uh, then we got Hino, which is the Thunderbird technique, and uh, that just basically summons a, a blast of electricity in the shape of a bird. Kiten is the same deal, except it's in the shape of a wolf. Then we have, um, oh, we have the, uh, the uh, there's another one. It's like, it starts with a J, not a J, but a J, and it's, oh, J. That's one of the, that's one of the sign language ones I can remember because it's the most fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it starts with a J, and it summons a dragon. And then that's what he used when he took um, his drums on his back. He pounded two of his drums, and then the dragon came out and attacked Luffy. We can also assume, like, if he, like, took his staff and, like, pounded on all of his drums, like, you know, maybe, like, a bunch of an array of, like, a zoo of electrical creatures would come out and attack his enemies there. Um, you know, uh, then we have Death Pia, which is kind of like a setup for Mama Roggins. So Death Pia is basically just an augmented attack with his uh, Maxim, where it causes the whole sky to go black around and electricity goes crazy and and then he can just send a massive lightning bolt to just nuke anything that happens to be below his ship. Yeah, basically all the same kind of techniques. It's just, you know, you, you don't want to be hit with any of them. But if you had preference, it would probably be just like, like Enderu comes up to you and just be like, I will now give you the honor of choosing which attack to be felled by me. It's like, pick like, oh, can I have like the, uh, the 10 volt Vari, please? And just like a zip. Well, actually, if he can, you know, the current as well. I mean, like, you know, 10 volts, but if the amps are a sufficient number. And by the way, it doesn't take very much current to like stop a human heart. You have like a 0.01 amp current, you know, just 
right here if it passes right through your heart it's probably gonna it's gonna drop you it's yeah so he could probably end up screwing with you with that so yeah um it's a ridiculously powerful fruit and I think that why Oda, like, that's why he kept Enaru around. I mean, he could have easily had Enaru defeated, like, truly, and you know, defeated, like, knocked out. And then you could have had um, Wiper come up with his Sea Prism and just, like, strap the Sea Prism to him. Like, take the Sea Prism skates, take a chain or, like, a, a bunch of rubber bands. Usopp, get all the rubber bands you can! Make a giant rubber band prison! And, you know, honestly, Usopp could probably do that. And get a bunch of rubber bands and chains and, like, strap the Sea Prism to him. And then he's knocked out. And then when he wakes back up, he can't use his power anymore. Um, and then at that point, you can either just execute him or, I mean, the Shandori like after all the crap that Enaru did and everything with Wiper and everything like I don't think they would have kept him as a prisoner I think they would have just executed him there maybe that's the reason Oda had to make sure he got away because if he was just defeated like think of all the other possibilities here if Luffy would have hit him so hard he would have been knocked out and then he fell all the way to the blue sea let's say the Maxim was destroyed in the process let's say Maxim hit a mountain on its way down and it got completely destroyed and then Enaru hit the ground kind of like Gedatsu did and he wakes back up then you got Enaru's threat on the Blue Sea, which, you know, could be an interesting story in of itself there, but the threat is still around. He would just be going island to island, nuking everything and trying to start up his own regime again. But that would be cool. Like, you could have maybe wipe... Like, he, he wipes out one of Whitebeard's islands and he has no idea who the Yonko are, and then Whitebeard shows up and then fights Enaru. That would have been cool, but kind of dangerous. Um... And if he would have been just knocked out and left on Skypea, then the Skypeans would have no reason to show him mercy. They would have just executed him. Whitebeard would have... T I mean, a Wiper, after his powers was nullified, after he it would want him to regain consciousness first. Like, he regains consciousness, all chained and rubbered up, and he's like, How dare you mortals do this to me? And Wiper would just, like, spear, or, like, burn bazooka, please. Hey. Hi. So. So. Do you believe in God? Well, I fancy myself a... <laughs> and it is like, it's like a blowtorch that just... <laughs> it just nukes off his head. Like, you can see, like, that's the kind of... Like, Wiper, Wiper wouldn't be having that. He wouldn't be keeping him as a prisoner. Um, that's way too risky. So the only other option is he gets defeated, but he gets away at the same time. So he's still going to show up later on in the story. Like, you can't just leave this the way it is. I mean, maybe you could. Maybe you could just have, like, Enaru being perfectly happy living in his city, possibly with an ancient weapon, with all these automata, you know, just, like, serving him. Like, here is your apples today, sir. Here is your beverage. Be like... This is good living. But you think you get bored with that after a while. And like I said, the whole reason they left the moon to begin with, the original races, was because of lack of resources. There wasn't really much up there except just a city. Yeah, he can use his electricity to power it, but where's the food going to be coming from is what I'm saying. I mean, even if you want to say Enaru's made of electricity, he doesn't need to eat. You could just say that. Um, I still think they do. I still think Logias, they can, they're they not just immortal just because they're made of their element. I still think they need to eat and sleep and drink and all that stuff. So it's, it's not going to be long where Enaru's like, all right, I powered up this whole city. I have a whole army of people. I mean, maybe he brought some food with him on the Maxim, but that's going to run out at some point. He's going to have to go back to the earth at some point and make at least a grocery run. You know, so uh, we're, we're going to see that. But I think when Enaru shows back up, he's going to be ridiculously powerful. You could even say, like, he didn't train at all. Like, he didn't train over the two-year time skip. It's just he's so powerful from default. Luffy was lucky. Any other buddy, any other opponent that goes up against him, they're going to be in for a problem. Like, if Enaru comes down and fights a Rouge, that would be cool because a Rouge is like a sky. He's a Brickin, actually, so that would actually fit. Like, a Rouge is pretty strong. He managed to take out Snack and everything, and he, you know, fought against Cracker for a little while. But if Enaru came down, I don't think he would have any problem whatsoever just smiting a Rouge like that. Maybe if a Rouge, like... No, because armament hockey doesn't really protect you from, like, it doesn't nullify a devil fruit. You can't, like, coat yourself in armament hockey and, like, be immune to any kind of devil fruit that hits you. It's not how it works. So, yeah, if it was, like, any other opponent like that, they would just get fried. So, yeah, I think Enaru's going to come back, and it's just going to be, like, Luffy's not going to be around to fight him, and he's going to go on a little rage of uh, madness there, and then maybe maybe you can get a Yonko. Maybe you could get Shanks or somebody to show up and fight against him, and then they, they would be a contender, but that that would be crazy. All right, well, that's been the Goro Goro no Mi. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you all have power where you're at. This will be Teching 101 signing out. Later, everybody. <laughs>
I wonder if I could stick these on my